Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ.com, and it's Patch Tuesday. You know what that means? Uh, we're going to go and read the words of a genius, and by that I mean my own blog. Uh, so this kind of followed similar trends that we have for 2021 so far. We had 66 total exploits that were patched, which is lower than we saw for most of 2020, but about standard for, for this year. And then only three of those were critical, which seems incredibly low. It sounds great. But the problem is, is two of those exploits are publicly known and one is being actively exploited. So while the trend of lower numbers is great, the trend of already known, battling known exploits being there is not great. It kind of makes the, I don't know, the time pressure that much greater to get everything patched. I just kind of how of some of the ones that we had. There's the uh, 2020 uh, 40444, which came out nine days before Patch Tuesday. Which basically, uh, people could in Office 365 send a corrupted file that would install ActiveX. It would basically remotely run a script. It it was considered a zero day, but it was only rated as important, not critical. Uh, basically, it required user interaction. They had to click on the bad file for that, which isn't always uh, always the best way to avoid it, as people click on things. But it, it makes it so it just takes a little bit extra step. And then ActiveX by default doesn't run. Uh, for lower credentialed or lower uh, privileged people. So that one, it was a big risk. It was known it was actually being used, but it was one where I don't know if it was as bad as it looked like initially. They had a workaround initially. It was use group policy and disable running ActiveX. Done. Uh, now they have the official fix. If you haven't done the group policy part, install that. In fact, install it anyway. But there is an official fix that's been tested out and that's working pretty good for it. So you just want to make sure you get that patched uh, for one. Uh, the next one is there's a, a remote execution code for uh, the WLAN auto config service, which this one, it was, it could be run without uh, authentication. It didn't require user interaction. It was really bad, but it was not so easy to run. It, the attack vector, I believe, was adjacent is what it means. It means they had to be on your network somewhere for that to run. I mean, it's not impossible, but it is another layer. So it wasn't rated like the nines that you normally see for something that could be warmable. It was rated as a 8.8. It's still bad, needs to be patched, but for that one, they had to have access to your system. Uh, the last one, this one is rated a 9.8. Um, the reason I'm putting this one third instead of the first is the, the patching happens on Linux, not in Windows. It's uh, OMI, or I'm going to actually read my own, Open Management Infrastructure. It's an open source software you get from GitHub. Um, the problem is a lot of Windows things do use that, interact with it, which opens the exploit to there. So if you are using OMI on your Linux, you want to go and update OMI on those machines to keep it secure. There's not gonna be a Windows patch for that one. Uh, whether it's what, AppGit or uh, Yum, I believe are the two, I'm not a Linux guy, I'm just guessing. But I think one of those two should get it. Uh, that's kind of the three big ones that I noticed. Other than that, the 66 were all intermediate to moderate. There wasn't a lot of extreme cases, but still something's actually being exploited, patch as soon as you can. I recommend you use PDQ to deploy an inventory. We can automate that for you, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, for PTQ.com, I'm Jordan.